This is a video on how to get a Russian tourist visa if you're a U.S. citizen. I've never done this before until now, and I recently did it, and it took a lot of research because the visa process is different from most other countries' visa process, specifically the visa support letter. So I try to break it down as simple as possible. So these are the five steps you need to take, and I'm going to explain them in more detail. Uh, so right now I'm just going to do an overview of step one, the passport requirement. Step two, getting your visa support letter. Step three, getting your Russian visa photos. Step four, filling out the actual Russian visa application at the Russian embassy website. And step five, either visiting or sending your application and all your documents to Invisa Logistic Services. So step one is pretty simple. You just need to make sure that you have the right passport requirements. That, that is, you have to have two empty visa pages left in your passport. If you don't, you need to get uh, another passport. Um, also, you need to have at least six months valid in your passport from the time that your proposed Russian trip ends. So if your trip ends in July, your passport has to be valid for six more months after the end of the trip. So if you don't have these two things, you need to renew your passport before you even attempt to get the Russian visa. And one, one tip I would give you if you are renewing your passport, opt for the larger 50-page passport book uh, as opposed to, I guess, the standard one is like 20 pages. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra, and if you travel a lot, you won't have to worry about trying to get extra pages added later on because the passport's good for 10 years, so uh, 20 pages may not last you enough. Step two is getting your visa support letter slash invitation letter. Now, this is the hardest part or most difficult part of this application, I would say. Um, it's really daunting reading about this because I almost didn't want to go ahead with this visa application after hearing this kind of requirement because I was thinking, how the hell do I get somebody in Russia to send me an invitation letter. I mean, I don't know anybody and I have no family there, so it's kind of like the chicken and the egg. Uh, you know, I don't know anybody there because I've never been there and I can't go there because I don't know anybody to send me an invitation letter. Um, but thankfully, there's three ways to get this letter. One is friends and family living there, which I don't have. Two is from a hotel. And three is from a a tour company or a tourist agency from Russia. So, like I said, I don't have any friends and family there, so that's out. Hotels, you can get them to send you the letter, but I think you need to book a hotel first in Russia before they do that, and then they charge you for the, the letter as well. Um, so that's not a route I want to take because I don't want to book something in Russia and pay for it before I have the visa, because in case I don't get the visa, then I'm out the hotel money. So that's not that good of an idea either, I don't think. So thankfully, the, the other route, the tourist company route, is very easy to do, especially with the Internet. There are companies that offer uh, to send you a PDF file with the with this visa support letter, as soon as you fill out a form online and pay them a fee of $20, $22, something like that. So apparently there's a lot of them online. Um, so I, I did a little research uh, and found one, ivisaonline.com, that I used, and they cost about $22. Um, and I found them through another website, called Rushable.com, which is R-U-S-S-I-A-B-L-E.com, written by a lady from Russia that has done a lot of research on not just visas, but 
all things Russia, you know, even getting cell phones and things like that when you're there. So she has a lot of good information there. And so she listed iVisa online as one of the three tour companies that offer the, the visa support letter. So um, that's, that's how I found it. Um, and just, just so you know, all these websites that I mentioned or that I used or whatever, uh, I have no financial interest in any of them. I have no links to them. I don't get any kickbacks or any money or anything like that. Um, while I'm sure the lady from Russia Bowl probably gets some kind of commission if people click on these websites from her website. And so if you are going to do this, I highly recommend clicking on her website to go to these uh, tourist company websites. Just I'm sure she makes a little bit of money and, you know, I think she deserves it because she did a lot of work to, to find all this stuff out because if I had to do it, it would take me a long time to, to narrow it down. And then even then, I wouldn't really know if I can trust these companies or not. So uh, it takes out some of the guesswork, I would say. So definitely check out one of these three companies. Um, I can't speak on the other two because I didn't actually use them, but I did use iVisa online. And I, I'm, I'm assuming their license is legit because I, I, I submitted it for my visa application and it came back okay. So they are legit. I can, I can confirm that at least for visa in visaonline.com. This is the website iVisa online that I use to get the visa support letter. Um, the website is pretty easy to use, pretty self-explanatory, and I found out about this site from this other site here called Rushable.com, and they listed these three options, iVisa, which is the one I just showed you, Russia Support is another one, and Hotels Pro. Uh, and so you... You can choose either one, any of these. Uh, like I said, I can't, I can't confirm how these other ones are, uh, but the end result is that you're supposed to get something like this as a PDF in in your email, and this is the visa support letter. Um, I actually went to the other listed one first, Russia Support. And I went through the whole thing and I was gonna order it through them until I was stopped at the end when they asked for my credit card and there was no option to pay from PayPal. And being that this is the first time I heard of any of these websites and they're in Russia, I wasn't that comfortable giving out my credit card to this to these companies. So that's why I went to iVisa and I noticed that they have a PayPal option to pay and that's what I chose to do. And so I paid through PayPal um, in Russian rubles actually. Um, it still it came out to about $22. But um, so that's why I went to iVisa instead of the other one first, just because I don't really want my credit card floating out out, out there to who knows where, especially since I don't know if these websites are legit yet. Although, like I said, I can vouch for iVisa online that they are legit because I did get my visa. So I'm sure their license number is legit. The third step is getting your two Russian visa photos. And the website of the Russian embassy specifies that they need to be 35 millimeter by 45 millimeter or one and three eight inches by one and three quarter inches. Photograph must be full face view in which the visa applicant is facing the camera directly with eyes open. No glasses or hats or anything like that. And the photograph must have been taken within the last six months. Uh, a lot of places offer U.S. passport photos and things like that, but I don't know that all of them know the specs 
for the Russian visa photos. So I recommend going to your local chain pharmacy like CVS, Rite Aid, or Walgreens because most of them have uh, a computer that has a drop-down menu that has all the specs programmed into them. So all they have to do is pick Russian visa photo and they know the specs that they need to take it in and cut it into and all like that. So you don't have to worry about if, if you're sending in the right sized photo with the, the, the right look or whatever. And generally they cost about $15 for two photos. So that's an easy way to get it done without having to worry about if you got it right or not. So step four is going to the Russian embassy website and actually filling out the visa application and printing it out. Uh, before you can do that, though, you need to figure out which tourist visa you want. So here we are at the Invisa Logistics website, which is ils-usa.com, and they show the rates and terms for the different types of visas, okay? So here you, you see that they have single entry, double entry, and three-year multiple entry. Uh, get, don't consider the double entry because that that's specific to if you were to visit Russia and during that trip you crossed the border to a neighboring country and then came back into Russia. That's what they consider double entry. So I, I doubt that um, a lot of people would consider that. Um, I don't think that's the case for most people. So it's basically down to single entry and the three-year multiple entry. Uh, if you see that the single entry is 90 and 180 for expedited and the three-year multiple entry is 270 or 540 for expedited. So there is no discount for getting the three-year multiple entry. It's exactly three times the single entry. So unless you really know that you're going to go there more than once, uh, or twice within the next three years, to me, it's not really worth it to get the three-year multiple entry, even though the website recommends people getting the three-year multiple entry. Um, if you get the single entry, you can always get another one if you decide to, to do it again within three years or whatever. As for the regular price and the expedited price, if I was you, I would not get the expedited price unless you're really in a hurry. For instance, I, I sent out my application to Invisa Logistics uh, from Florida on May 7th. They received it on May 10th and sent me an email the same day. Uh, asking about some, something about my application, which is also good because they look over your application before they send it to the Russian embassy. So they obviously know what to look for doing this all the time. So they asked me a question about uh, something about I, I put down that I'm not employed currently and things like that. Anyway, that was on May 10th. And she told me that the visa will be back from the Russian embassy on May 23rd. And she was right, it was. And on May 23rd, I got an email uh, showing that they sent me a FedEx that same day. And so on the 24th of May, I received my Russian visa. So 17 days from the day I, I mailed it to the day I received the visa back. So that's pretty good. Um, so I would say, if you have at, at least a, m a month or more uh, before your planned trip, then do not get the expedited, um, extra expedited fee. Just go for the regular. So in my case, I went for the single entry, it's $90. In visa's fee is $33. And so, that's if you go to one of their centers. 
Okay. Um, and I don't, you don't have to make an appointment. I don't know how long the wait is. Um, but I wasn't close enough to, to go there in person. So I chose processing by mail, which is an additional $85. So all told, it cost me $208 uh, to get the visa. So uh, choose, choose your visa, figure out the funds you're going to need, whether you're going in person or sending it by mail. And you need to get a, a money order for that. I recommend a postal money order because you're going to be at the post office anyway. Um, I sent mine by uh, priority mail and I had no problems. Once you figure out which type of visa you want, you have to go to the Russian Embassy website and fill out the online form. Uh, as you can see in the address bar, the website is visa.kdmid.ru and it's an online form and at the end you print it out and it saves all your information and that's what you need to send to Invisa Logistics for your application. Um, I'm going to show my printed out application, obviously with the personal information blocked out, just to show you what the questions are like and uh, a few things that might trip you up to look out for uh, so that you don't send in an application that needs to be redone or edited because it's going to cost you more money and time if that happens. So this is what the visa application form looks like after you finish the online form and print it out. Uh, so let's go over some problem areas, potential problem areas. Number four, date of birth. Make sure you put it in the European format of day first, then month, then year. Same with the uh, date of issue and valid until on your passport information. Make sure you fill those out in the European form. Uh, as for the type of visa, I picked common tourist, number, number of entries single, and date of arrival and departure. I put July 18th to August 16th. Uh, your visa is good for 30 days. I'm not exactly sure that you want to put the whole 30 days there uh, because, I mean, you want to put the 30 days there, but I wouldn't stay the whole 30 days just in case you miss your flight or something like that. So I intend on getting there, let's say, July 18th or later, and I intend on leaving there, say, August 15th or thereabouts. So I give myself a day or two uh, just with some leeway, just in case something happens. You don't want to be past your visa date trying to leave Russia and run into some kind of problems or fines or whatever. Number of entries, I pick single. Like I said, the double entry is more for people that want to uh, cross the border into bordering countries and then come back into Russia. Um, the host organization is Visa Service LLC. The reference number is that number I showed you that has letters to the left of it. Do not include the letters, just put the number. And the confirmation number is specific to your specific uh, invitation letter, so that's why I blocked it out. And I put their address there, and I put the two cities I plan on visiting, Moscow and St. Petersburg. So that's page one. Next page is a place for you to put your photograph. You're supposed to glue it on there um, and put your signature and the date. Uh, I didn't glue it on there. I just included the photos in a little glassine envelope. I'm sure Invisa Logistics uh, gets that kind of thing all the time and they have the glue or staple or whatever they need to put it on there so and they did that so that's not a, a issue um what else number 16 who will pay for your trip to stay in russia but independently do you have health insurance 
this is a big one because the U.S. is not required. Uh, if you're a U.S. citizen, you're not required to have health insurance coverage in Russia during your trip. Most other countries, uh, if you're a citizen of most other countries, you need to show proof of having health insurance while you're in Russia. Uh, for some reason, uh, their agreement with the U.S. doesn't require that, so that's good. Um, I don't know if you want to get health insurance or not coverage while you're over there, but I chose not to, so another thing I got to wor worry about, I guess. <laughs> Next page. Let's see. So then here it asks you uh, all kinds of things about if you've been convicted, if you have any kind of health problems, if you've ever been refused entry to, to Russia or anything like that. Uh, have you ever overstayed your visa? Okay, last thing is number 22, planned place of stay in Russia. So these two hotels that I put here are the hotels that I put in my application for the uh, visa support letter, okay? It doesn't mean I'm, I have reservations there. It doesn't even mean I plan on staying there necessarily. Um, I just picked these because they, they seem like hotels that I could possibly stay at, but um, you don't have to stay there. And and so for the visa support letter, you just have to pick two, uh, the places of the cities that you're going to be in. You have to pick a hotel and say that you're going to stay there. You don't, you're not obligated to stay there. You can change your mind and stay someplace else. And that's, that's pretty much what I plan to do. So uh, the good thing about the, the Russian visa application, as opposed to some other visa applications, you're not required to have a plane ticket already uh, before you apply for the visa. Some other countries, you have to show them that you already have a plane ticket or that you have a plane ticket within the, um, you have to travel there within 90 days of getting the visa. Uh, Russia doesn't have that uh, requirement. So, and you're also not required to show that you booked some kind of lodging ahead of time. So that's good because if somehow you don't get the visa or you get turned down, you're not out a bunch of money because you already bought a plane ticket or booked hotel rooms. All right, so next page. Next page, has your passport ever been lost or stolen? Uh, countries you travel to in the last 10 years? Last places of work, uh, educational institutions you attended. Uh, <laughs> I thought these were kind of strange, but special training. Do you have any experience, specialized skills related to firearms, explosive, nuclear matters, biological or chemical substance? Hopefully you put no on there, uh, just so that they don't come asking you more questions. Have you ever performed military service? None. Armed conflicts. Have you ever been involved in armed conflicts? Uh, I don't know that, you know, if, if you actually have and you put yes, I don't know that they're going to ask more questions or not. But, um, you know, they ask it, answer truthfully and see what happens. Um, I didn't get any kind of request for an interview like they warn on the website that they could uh, request you to come in and ask you more questions and things like that. It didn't happen to me. I, I don't expect it happens to most people, but you never know. So that's, that's pretty much it. That's the whole application. So just, uh, you just print it out and add that to all your other paperwork and send it to Invisa Logistics. The last step, step five, is to send all your paperwork to Invisa Logistics Services, or you can go in person to their office and drop it off. Uh, here are the five locations uh, that they have, and 
those locations are in the same cities that the uh, Russian embassies are in. Um, one caveat, though, is that as of May something, uh, they're no longer accepting any visa applications in Seattle. So don't try to go there and don't try to mail them your application. So only use Washington, D.C., New York, San Francisco, or Houston. Again, you can go in, in person and only cost you $33, or you can send it in by mail like I did, and it'll cost you another $85. And one thing I think I didn't touch on about in visa logistic services is that uh, they're not just some company that does aggregate forms and sends them into the embassy. They have the Russian government approved franchise to do this, okay? There are other companies that I guess will send in your visa application for you, uh, but they're not the uh, officially sanctioned by Russia, Russian government. And they charge you a lot more, by the way, because I looked into some of them until I realized that only in visa logistic services has the actual contract to, to do this, uh, where the other ones, I guess they can legally do it, but um, I don't know, they, in visa has some kind of, um, gets to cut the line or maybe does it in bulk or whatever, I don't know, but they're very efficient and the price you pay $33 is a small price to pay uh, to not have to make an appointment at the Russian embassy. Who knows how long that's going to take uh, or have to go through an interview with the Russian embassy or anything like that. So definitely use in visa, whether you mail it in or you go in in person. And if you're going to mail it in, you don't need to notify them ahead of time to say I'm mailing it in. Just just mail it in. That's what I did. Um, I used Priority Mail from USPS, and it got there in I think two days or three days. And when they sent uh, the visa back to me, they sent it FedEx overnight. So, like I said, all told, it was only 17 days from the time I sent it to the time I received it back. This is one of the forms you need to send in along with your application to Invisa Logistics. It's your agreement with them uh, that they're handling your application and you write down the fees that you're paying and the processing fee or whatever is applicable and your contact number or whatever. Um, this form can be found at the web address on their website above. You can see it in the address field there. This is another form you need to send along with your application to Invisa. Uh, it's if you mail it into them. Uh, so it tells them where you want them to ship your visa and things like that. If you want signature required when they send it back to you. Uh, and below is even some additional services like, I guess, insurance in case your passport is lost. They pay you something for it. Also, uh, $30 extra, they'll fix anything that's wrong on your electronic um, application at the Russian embassy. Um, they go in with your password and change what needs to be changed if you want them to do that. Also, for another $30, there's express delivery, which says that they'll submit your application to the embassy the same day they receive it. And even $3 for automated SMS notification when your visa is ready. Um, I don't know how much you really need these things. I think they're kind of unnecessary, especially the SMS and uh, uh, submitting your visa the same day and all of that kind of stuff. I, uh, you know, they, they submit it pretty quickly as it is. So there's no real need to pay another $30 to do that. So I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't recommend choosing any of those. Uh, just make sure your online application is correct. You know, check it and double check it before you print it out and send it to them so that it doesn't cost you extra time and money for them to fix it. But I think for the small things, any little 
little things which wrong with your application, they, they'll probably fix it and just send it along uh, without charging you. So. so those are the five steps involved in getting a Russian tourist visa for a U.S. citizen. And those are the steps that I took and, and the websites I used and the results that I got. Um, one thing uh, is that although you have the Russian visa and you have access to get into Russia, there's another step once you get there that you need to make sure you take care of or have, have taken care of for you, and that's the registration. Uh, I guess the law is that you need to register within seven business days. I think that's been changed to one business day. So generally, uh, the hotels are well aware of this, obviously, and take care of it for you. So when you come into Russia, if you stay in a hotel, they'll do it for you. I don't think they even charge you for it. It's part of their duty. Um, it's the host's duty to register you. However, from what I read, if they don't, uh, you're the one that gets hit with a fine. So make sure that you do get registered. Um, the thing that I'm a little worried about is if I book an Airbnb instead of a hotel in Russia, what happens? Obviously, the Airbnb person is going to be responsible for registering me, but they're not a hotel and I don't know how diligent they are about doing that. Um, I don't want to find out that they just say, oh, yeah, yeah, I registered you. And, and you find out later that they didn't uh, because there's a form to fill out and it has to be registered with the police or the post office. So I don't know if, if Airbnb people will do that for you. Obviously, I'm going to ask them before I book anything, but... Um, your guess is as good as mine if they're actually going to do it. So we'll see. Maybe I'll do another video about that after I come back from Russia for my actual results of what actually happened. So thanks for watching.